Why are you wearing that? Seema whispered over the NFC. What? This? Eros looked down and opened his lab coat, and straightened the collar, and then looked back at her. These cannon people, some of the most arrogant, snotty-nosed assholes you're ever likely to meet. Not sure that I've ever met one which wasn't weird. Seema looked back at Eros with a sarcastic expression, grinned, and then let out a laugh that she just couldn't hold back. What? Well, fine, whatever. Weirder than me. They have this whole system that favours people who have almost never had to try, and teaches them that they are like gods amongst idiots. I had a fairly normal upbringing. I wasn't sent to the academies when I was three or four years old, and constantly told them I'm the smartest person alive. My dad was a mining engineer, and my mum a cook at a local education facility. I was deemed too much of a dreamer to achieve anything by an asshole teacher when I was seven, so yeah, let's just say I realistically earn my right to be weird. All right, keep your coat on, Seema paused and then sighed. What is taking them so long? This has to be the slowest umbilical I think I've ever seen installed. Well, one or two possibilities. Everyone on board that ship is a scientist, which means they possibly spent about triple the amount of time required arguing on who was going to press the buttons, and then they likely did a few calculations to see if the material was strong enough and would reach far enough, if the pumps are working okay, if our hull is demagnetized properly, they probably even reworked the calibration on our airlock's safety handshake. You're kidding. What's, what's the other possibility? That I made the airlock send them back a bad handshake and they are furiously doing what I just said because they're afraid the link way will break, when really, it's fine. An engineer would have just shrugged it off and said, meh, it's within its spec. You really hate these guys, Seema responded, almost impressed and not at all shocked. I wouldn't say hate, I just love wasting their time. They're wasting my time, I'm wasting theirs. It's a two-way relationship. The lights on the airlock lit green. Eris leant to his left and pressed a button. And now, the piece de resistance. Seema looked at him for a moment as the airlock began to open, and then looked back as she saw him smile. The airlock opened, revealing a cannon orca science vessel outside, linked with a transparent umbilical. It was positioned upside down with respect to the asp. A single figure was orientated upside down in the airlock door as well. How is that even possible? Didn't they check? I mean, can't they see the ship? So, that tells you. The pilot is a full-on scientist who flies almost 100% on instruments, rather than, you know, using his eyes. That, that makes no sense. When they attached the umbilical, they would have seen the orientation was wrong. You would think that, and you would be right. But they would also trust their instruments. It would also have caused one or two of them to scratch their heads. As I was trying to imply before, not so wise to the world, some of these guys. Anyway. Eros finished whispering and nodded his head forward and pointed at the figure who stood at the airlock. It released its boots and began using the handbars to rotate around, revealing the figure to be female. Madeline, please follow me on board the Alum. There are matters to discuss, she said. Seamus took a step forward. The woman held up her hand in response. Only you are required, Doctor. Well, I'm afraid that won't be possible. Let's call it Insurance? Your friend is not required. My friend's name is Seema, and she just performed a sub ergosphere flight that makes her somewhat unique and important. Something even you lot haven't even attempted. Buzz lot? She said in a stern tone, her eyes locked on Eros. He paused, looking at her and the orca behind her. Something felt wrong. Then, I bid you farewell and a safe onward journey. I am not required to do a single thing. I have broken no laws. Eris waved. The figure paused for a moment and looked to her right, listening to her earpiece. He looked at her position. She had not yet passed inside the airlock. Eris quickly jolted to the side and pulled down on the emergency clothes lever. It was getting more use than what was probably expected on such an expedition. What are you doing? Seema shouted, holding her hand out in his direction. They are not from cannon, he responded he was quickly spinning himself around and pushing towards the exit. Which of us is better avoiding gunfire? Well, probably me. I'm on it. Great. Don't worry about me. I'll strap myself down the best I can. Let's just get the hell out of here. 
the lights and the sound of a ship went dead. Oh, you have to be kidding. Is that a shutdown pulse? Is there a far going out there? He asked of the room. Seema had already left, although shouted a response which echoed around the corner. I'll tell you when I get to the cockpit. There was a large crack and a bang that caused the ship to reverberate. That sounds like standard munitions, Eros said, as a second wave hit. 